In this video, we're going to discuss the three types of accounting changes. So ideally, accounting information should be both consistent and comparable. And here's what we mean by that. So let's take the company Amazon.com. In a perfect world, if we were to look at Amazon.com's 2019 fiscal year financial data, it would have been prepared using the same types of accounting rules and principles that Amazon used for its 2018 uh, fiscal year. So we say that the financial data is consistent over time. And also, we'd like it to be comparable. So if we were comparing Walmart's financials to the financials of Amazon, we'd like to believe that, okay, they were prepared using the same basic rules and principles. However, sometimes there are accounting changes that make these objectives difficult to achieve, that can hinder comparability and consistency. And so then the question is, how do we account for the fact that we've had some kind of accounting change? So if we have a change in accounting principle, we're going to account for that uh, one way, okay? And then we're going to have change in accounting estimate and so forth. So, but let's go through these one by one. So a change in accounting principle is we're switching from one type of gap method to another type of gap method, okay? For example, if you have a company that use, so the, let's say they're a retailer and they use FIFO first in, first out for their inventory, and they say, you know what? We don't want to use FIFO anymore. We're going to switch to weighted average cost for our inventory. Okay, so now we've got to switch. FIFO is gap. Weighted average cost is gap. So it's not that this company is no longer following gap. Okay, these are switching from one gap method to another. Okay, so this would be an example of a voluntary uh, change in accounting principle, and we're going to account for it retrospectively. Retrospectively means this. We're going to go back to the previous year's financial. So let's say that the company, where you're looking at the company's 10K and you've got 2019 uh, fiscal year, 2018 and 2017. We're gonna go back and we're going to recast these prior period financial statements as if the company had been using a uh, weighted average cost method all, the, all that time. Okay, so we're gonna go backward in time and we're gonna redo the financial statements as if they were using uh, the, the new accounting principle that they've just switched to, okay? So this is an example of a voluntary change. A mandatory change could be that there is, the, for example, let's say we've got a US firm and the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the FASB, they come out and say, here's a new rule, now you have to do X. And then there's so, oh, we say, okay, we have a change in accounting principle because there's, there's new gap and we have no choice, but we, we have to make this change, okay? So retrospective adjustment when there's a change in accounting principle, changing from one type of gap to another, you're gonna have to go back and redo the prior period financial statements. Now, and we have a change in reporting entity, we also are going to have a retrospective application. We're gonna go back to the prior period financials for the past few years, and we're gonna say, okay, what would the financials have looked like if the way we're doing the reporting entity now had been this way for the past couple of years. Now, if you're wondering, what do you mean by change in reporting entity? I'll give you an example. So let's say we've got a company. So we'll use, let's say Walmart. Okay. And so Walmart owns 80% of some subsidiary. Okay. So they've got this sub here. They own 80%. So they're going to consolidate. Okay. So they'd use the consolidation method when accounting for the subsidiary. But let's say that Walmart said, okay, we actually went and we no longer own 80%. Uh, now we just own 5% of that subsidiary. So then they would not use consolidation method to account for this subsidiary anymore. Okay, so now they're gonna have to use a different method. Okay, so they're gonna probably be using the fair value method. Okay, so now they're gonna have to do a different type of accounting. There's been a change in the reporting entity because the subsidiary is no longer, so if we're looking at, for example, 2019, so let's say 2018, or excuse me, 2017, 2018, Walmart consolidated this subsidiary, and now in 2019, they are not. So now there's been a change in reporting entity, so they would go back and say, okay, let's assume that we had not consolidated this sub for the past few years and recast the financial statements. So that's a change in, in reporting entity. So it's a similar retrospective application, just like a change in accounting principle. Now, if we look at a change in accounting estimate, which is our third type, we're gonna account for it differently. So change in accounting estimate, uh, an example would be, let's say that you had some property, plant, and equipment, and you were depreciating it uh, let's say you were depreciating it over 20 years, 
And then at some point you come to realize, you know what, actually, this is not 20 years that this property plant and equipment is going to last. It's actually going to be 45 years or 35 years, something like that, something different where there's an estimate that you made previously and you say, you know what, this, this estimate is not accurate. Now it's going to be 45 years. So you're going to do prospective application. Prospective means you do not go back and change the prior period's financials. You don't do that. You just say, okay, whatever the financials were before, that happened, that's over and done with. But going forward, now when we calculate depreciation, any remaining uh, cost basis on this property, plant, and equipment, when we say, okay, what's the estimated useful life? We're going to be using our new figure. Okay, we're going to ignore whatever we thought it was before, and now we're going to update the figure. So basically, this is like fix it and move on. That's what you do with a change in accounting estimate. You don't go back and redo the prior period financials. You just say, okay, given that we've got this new information, uh, what should be the depreciation expense that, that we calculate this year? Okay, so that's prospective application. Now, so those are the three changes uh, that, that you can have accounting changes. No, you can also have errors in the financial statements. You could have where, let's say that uh, one of the accountants made a math mistake or something like that when they were actually going to compute, uh, let's say gross profit or something, or they incorrectly applied a gap. Maybe they deducted the salvage value when they were doing like double declining balance depreciation or something like that. So somehow, for some reason, there is an error in the financial statements. And in that case, if that happens, the company would have to go back and issue a restatement. So they're gonna have to go back and recast the prior years. So whatever the errors and so forth, so the past few years, they're gonna have to go back and reissue and redo the financial statements to correct the error.